Hello and welcome to my channel. I appreciate you for taking the time to join me in today's video. Now, in today's video, we'll be looking at some very important concepts. We'll be looking at what SSH is, how to create an SSH RSA key pair. We'll also look at how to connect to a remote server using your SSH RSA key pair. And then we'll look at some of the advantages of using a Shebang user bin environment bash instead of using a Shebang bin bash. Now, I'll be creating a series of system engineering DevOps projects. Why this may not be applicable to you immediately, they will definitely come in handy down the line. So I encourage you to subscribe and turn on notification so that you can get regular updates. Now let's get back to the concept. Let's look at the first discussion for the video. Um, so what is SSH? SSH basically stands for Secure Shell. Um, it is a cryptographic network protocol for secure data communication. You can also use it for remote command logins. You can use it for remote command executions and other network services between two network computers. Now, I understand that this may be very technical. You may not uh, grab the concept now, but at the end of the discussion, I'll just give an illustration to help those that still can't understand what these definitions are. So, um, how does SSH work um i've said that ssh uses your public key it uses the cryptography to authenticate the remote computer and allow the two computers to establish a secure encrypted connection so once the connection is established then ssh now provides a secure channel for data exchange so it provides a secure channel for data exchange provides a secure channel for command executions and also other network services. So it provides a series of services such as um, data exchange, command execution, and network services. Let's look at SSH clients. So when you want to connect to a server, you will need an SSH client. And we have several um, SSH clients out there. We said the first one is open ssh this is the one we're going to be using for the video and we also have putty and then lastly we have win scp so these are um, some clients you can use to log into your servers so now let's dive into what ssh keys are ssh has two pairs so the key come in two pairs a public key and a private key so you will have a public and a private key so you can use the public key is, is stored on the server so you can see that key is found remotely and it is used for encryption why the private key resides in the client's computer so if i'm the one generating the the key the ssh the private key will be in my computer why the public key is supposed to be stored in my server. The private key is used for the decryption. So basically, SSH has two keys. We said the first one is the public key and the second being the private key. Um, the public key is saved in the server while the private key resides in your computer. So we have different types of SSH keys. We have different types of SSH key. Basically, for the video, we'll be looking at RSA keys, but you can also have DSA keys, you have ECDSA keys, and you have ED25519 keys. So for the video, we'll be focusing more on um, RSA keys. So additionally, I said, once you've connected to an SSH server, you can use your command line tools to perform various operations on the remote server. So when you successfully connect to your servers, you can perform um, some 
command line tools you can use them for you can use your commands for navigating the file system you can use them for managing processes and you can use them to install software packages so we'll be looking at all this as time proceeds so it is very important to understand the security of the ssh you're trying to use so ssh keys are very difficult to crack that's one advantage of it many passwords can be cracked you can either use brute force attack or dictionary attack to crack passwords but when it comes to ssh it's more difficult because of the number of bytes or the security ssh has so using ssh keys just guarantees the highest level of um, security your servers can have or your computers can have so we said ssh is designed to be a secure protocol but it is also important to follow best practices to ensure that the security of your ssh connections such as um, using you can ensure additional security by using strong passwords or passphrase you can disable root logins and also keep your your ssh clients like your open ssh keep them up to date by updating them to have the latest security patches so in case in case you're just wondering what the passphrase is um, this is just a sequence of words or numbers or characters that you can use to authenticate a user or you protect your access to your computers or your network or encrypted data so you have um, computers and you want to give an extra layer of protection to them you can use either passwords or passphrase so passphrase are just a sequence of words and numbers so these are just um, some of the essential concepts of ssh but there is more to it so if you want to know more about SSH, you can do more research on that. So there's more to learn about this powerful tool. But from all I've said in all the discussions we've done, I hope this helps you get started with your project. Now let's look at an illustration. So here's an illustration to help you understand better the concept of SSH. So let's use this illustration. So imagine you want to visit the president. So you want to visit the president. So the president here represents our server. So imagine you want to log into a server. So let's say, imagine um, you want to visit the president. The president here is referring to the server you want to log in. Um, the president may represent the server that you want to log in or it could be your computer it could be your computer or network device it can be your computer or your network device that is located in a different location so it can be in a different location so for you to visit the president um, you have to go or you have to pass through multiple layers of security measures and we refer to that um, security measure so you have to pass through security measures and we refer to the, that security measure as your SSH protocol so this is just to ensure that the connection between the server is encrypted and authenticated. So when you want to visit the president, you have to pass through different layers of security measures. So that's the same thing SSH does. For you to visit the president here, which is the server, you need to pass through a series of um, security measures. So this is what we refer to as um, SSH. So this is SSH protocol. now when you get to the first um, security checkpoint let's say security checkpoint um, you need to show your credentials so whoever is there on duty you have to show the person your credentials so refer to credentials here as your ssh key 
so it can be your SSH keys or password so when you when you get to the security checkpoints you need to show your credentials and your credentials here in this sense we refer to them as your SSH keys or password so you need to be properly identified so when you want to establish a connection between your server um, you need to pass through an authentication um, process by showing your SSH key pairs like your public key and your private key now when your credentials have been verified and everything goes fine um, the next thing is to so you have to go pass through a secure um, tunnel or a path to see the president and we refer to that as um, so you have to go to a secure tunnel so SSH also uses um, a path or a port and we said SSH uses port 22 so all your um, connections go through port 22 so you can refer to it as a secure tunnel so when you've been granted access to see the president you will go through um, a channel or a pathway and we refer to that as port and the port number is 22 so ssh uses port 22 finally when you reach the president you can now communicate or interact with them so you have remote access so finally when you get to the president you can interact with them you can discuss with them bring up business deals or whatever uh, is was your objective of visiting him in the first place so when you when you now get um, successfully connected to your servers you can perform um, you can perform some commands you can transfer files you can perform other various operations like um, command login you can transfer files you can install packages and other operations so when you finally have access to your servers you can then carry out this um, following services like um, transferring of files installing of packages and other operations so with these illustrations i hope you basically understand the concept of ssh now what we're going to do next is to dive into exercises let's see how we can solve some examples the first exercise we have here says you should write a script that uses ssh to connect to your server using the private key and the private key should be located in the root on inside the hidden directory called .ssh and the name of the file should be school so we are going to write a script that uses ssh to connect to a web server or a server using the private key now let's get the sandbox i'll just go to my left and that's the sandbox you discover i have several sandboxes about 19 of them so basically just to chip in this maybe when i try to get a particular sandbox and it says limit reach this just um, tells you that you can have only two sandbox two sandboxes running so what you need to do is just to locate um, a sandbox you don't often use and then you try to destroy it and start up a new one now be careful when you destroy a sandbox because you will lose all your content so before destroying some a sandbox just ensure that you've put uh, push all your work to github so um you, you discover that we have different kind of sandboxes so a sandbox is just an environment for you to work with and it comes with some pre-installed packages or softwares so if i'm going to work with um maybe c language i can just use ubuntu if i'm going to work with python i can use ubuntu python or maybe it involves pulp fabric or puppet so basically a sandbox is just a tool for you to use to work 
if I'm going to work with a particular language, I just identify if I'm going to work with JavaScript, I can use this. So those of you that have issues selecting a sandbox, sandbox are just um, tools that come with uh, pre-installed packages. Like for this is necessary, you use this for your Python network project. So basically I want to use Ubuntu 20.04 because I'm comfortable with that. So I'll just have to destroy this other sandbox. Remember to push your projects to your GitHub repositories before you do that. So this now allows you to get any sandbox you want. So any of the sandboxes you want to use, you can use. But for this particular um, project, I'm going to use Ubuntu 20.04. Now, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to use, how to connect your servers from different um, sandboxes. So in case you are doing your project on uh, Ubuntu 20.04 and you want to log in to your server using maybe your VS Code or maybe using your Git Bash or maybe using your command prompt, I'm going to show you how to use different sandboxes to log into your servers. So you see right here that um, it says this is ready to be used. But basically, this is just used for WebStack Debugging 3. So let me go back to my Ubuntu 20.04. Our repository for this is ALS System Engineering DevOps. The directory is 0x0b SSH. And the file name is um, zero use private key. So I just get the file name. Just cd into my ALS system engineering. From there, I'll make a directory. 0x0, 0x0b, ssh. And I can now create my file. Now to start this to start this script, I need to specify the interpreter to use and the command to do that is just to use um, your shebang. So your shebang just specifies the interpreter to use. And we said we need to use our user directory in our bin environment. We should use the interpreter bash. Now remember we said there's an advantage of um, there's an advantage of using um, shebang user bin environment bash over over shebang bin bash. Now let me try to explain what the differences are or what the advantage of using one over the other is. Um, let's go into our bin directory and see what's going on there. So I'll see the bin, and if I ls discover that I have so many packages and programs in it, so let's identify bin um, bash. So we are now in our bin directory. Let's look for bash um, bash. So you can see by my left that you have your bash interpreter here. So what if I'm using a, very, um, a different system? So when you try to use um, Shebang Beam Bash, it just restrict um, restrict the interpreter to the Beam directory. So the it's very um, it's very wise to use um, the Shebang um, user environment because. If someone is using a different operating system, their bash interpreter may be located in a, in a different directory. So let's exit and let's clear our screen. So it's always good to go to the user directory and in it under the bin directory. It's always good to use this because commonly you can find so many um, interpreters here. So it's always good to use the user environment. Then in the bin directory, you can now use your bash as your interpreter because if someone is using a different operating system like Linux 
or Unix, Mac OS, and Windows, their interpreter may not be in the BIM directory. It may be, it, it will sometimes be in their user directory, so it's always advisable to use your Shebang, your Shebang user environment to locate the interpreter. So here you can see that we also have our bash here. So it's good to use um, the Shebang user bin environment rather than the Shebang bin environment. So I hope you understood what I just said. So let's get back into our file with a CD ALX. So from here we can just directly go into the file. So I can say CDLS system engineering and we were working on 0x0b SSH. Now ls and we create our file with a vi. So I'll just create the file. And now we now that we've understood what it means by using hash user hash user in the bin in the environment let's use the bash as the interpreter now the question was for us to the question was for us to write a bash script that uses ssh to connect to your your server using the private key and the name of the user should be ubuntu so this is how it's going to be Remember that your the second line of your script should be a comment, so I'm just going to write a comment and say um, using SSH to connect to a server. So I'll just use SSH and our username is um, Ubuntu. For now, our username is Ubuntu. And then the private key to use, we are going to specify. So the, the flag minus I just specify the identity to be used. So remember we said we have different kind of um, um, SSH keys, like the RSA key, the DSA key, the ECDSA key, and the ED25519 keys. So we are going to specify which identity to be used. Um, so we said our identity is going to be located in the root, in the root, um, in a in a hidden directory called SSH, and in a file called school. So that's the identity the computer is going to use to log in, and that's all about the script. You can exit, save and exit. Now one thing you need to know about your script is that you need to make them executable. So we can change the mode and say allow all users to execute this file and the name of our file is zero use the private key when i ls you discover that our file is now an executable script so next thing is just to git add it um git add yeah before you git add remember to create your readme so i can just create a readme directly from my command line And just a simple readme, just say SSH. Okay, Ctrl C, exit. So I can LSG discover that I have my readme and can just git add them. Git commit them, just any commit message will work. Um, creating SSH or using SSH, let me just write use it. Using SSH keys. From spelling okay and I can git push so now let's go back and see if what we have done is correct so that was successfully done it says congratulations all texts are passed successfully you are ready for your next mission okay let's look at exercise 2 exercise 2 says um, or exercise 1 says Write a bash script that creates an RSA key pair. 
um, the requirement is that the requirement is that um, the the your private key should be stored in the file called school, and then the number of bits it should have it should be four thousand and ninety six, and then your the created key must be protected by the passphrase. Remember how we said passphrase, just an extra layer of security. So your passphrase is going to be Betty. Um, the number of bits for your file is going to be 4096. The name of your file must be school. So remember we said SSH keys have two key pairs, the private and the public key. So this is just the private key. Your private key is called school. Um, yeah, the number of bits you have is 4096. The number of bits here just tells you the size of the SSH key, so it just tells you the size. So bits uh, basically are like 2 raised to power. The algorithm for saving, creating that is like 2 raised to power to the begin. So the size for your RSA key is um, 2 raised the beginning from the range from 2 raised to power 1024 down the way to to reach the power of um, 4096. So this is just to show you that um, you, requ you require to reach the power of one, uh, 1024 combinations for you to be able to crack this um, RSA key. So you can have to reach the power of um, 1024 down to to reach the power of 4000. 96. So we are going to use 4096 to create our key. So I hope this just helps you understand why it's 4096. Now, what I like to do is before I create the SSH keys, in order not to have errors, uh, maybe future errors, what I do is I go into the root directory and see if there's any f um, directory called SSH. So when I ls this file and there's no SSH, but I need to also find if there are any hidden directories. So I say ls minus a to show me everything. And you discover that I have an existing um, SSH directory. Um, because I wouldn't want to run into errors, I advise you just um, maybe rename it or remove it. So it's best I just rename it and say change the name from SSH to, um, let's just say old. Let's just use old SSH. Or you can just delete it by saying rm-r.ssh. So whichever you won't feel like using. So this is just to have a clean slate so that there will be no issues with your SSH keys. So when you are here, the command to generate the SSH key is um, SSH key gen. So you say SSH key gen. Um, the type of key we want to generate. So minus T the flag to tell us the type of key. And we said we want to generate RSA key. And now the number of bytes the key should have is minus B. So minus B just tells the computer um, the number of bytes you want your key to have so we said it's 4096 i believe you know why it's 4096 because the tax requirement mentioned that it should be 4096 and our to specify our passphrase we said minus p so minus p is the flag to say okay passphrase we say our passphrase is betty yeah be careful with your passphrases your passphrase is a, um, on a lowercase b so betty is our passphrase and this file we want to create we have to specify the path for it and we say to do that you use the minus f just shows us the path we say the root directory um, in a hidden directory called ssh and the name of the file should be school so the name of the file for your keys should be school if the name of the file is not given by default, when you say SSH keygen, it will generate a file for you called, I think, um, on ID underscore RSA. 
So if you don't specify the file, by default, SSH creates the file as underscore DSA. No, sorry, IDRSA. So, but because the requirement in the tag just specifies that it should be school. So, if you don't name your file by default, it's going to be ID underscore RSA. So now let's run this command. So the command is SSH keygen. The type of file to generate is an the type of key to generate is RSA key. The number of bytes you have is four thousand and ninety six. Our uh, passphrase is Betty. The location of our file is um in the roots on under a hidden directory called dot ssh and the name of the file is cool now when i run this command it tells me that it's generating a public key and a private rsa key pair and it has created a directory for it in the root folder in under dot ssh and our identity has been saved in a file called school and our public key has been saved in another file called school.pub so you have two key pairs remember the private key is school the public key is school.pub so um if you have run uh, run this command just do ls minus a so ls minus a to show us all the hidden directories and you discover that we have a new ssh directory I'll just clear my screen for simplicity. I'll cd into the .ssh directory. I'll make an ls to see the files. And you discover that I have two files, my private key and my public key. So what I'll do, what I'll recommend you to do is that you need to copy your private and your public key and put it somewhere safe. Because one thing with the sandbox or one with one thing with your terminal is that you may come back and find out that um, your terminal or your sandbox has been wiped by by whoever did that. So it's always safe to have like a backup of it. So what I do is just vi into your um your public key first and foremost. So we are into it now get this key and save it somewhere so i'm going to copy this key out yeah be careful when you copy your keys so that you don't omit some numbers or letters so i'll just carefully cop copy this out yeah I'll just get a notepad or something and save it here now I'll also go back to, so I save and exist. I'll go back to my private key. Yeah, this is a private key, it's supposed to be private. So I'll just via into school. So this right here is my private key. I'll just via into it and get all of it and save it somewhere just to create a backup for it. So be careful when you're copying your keys just copy them out open a notepad or something just save, keep them somewhere private or safe and there you go that's my private key not all of it though yeah go back to the tax yeah so when you're done saving your um, when you're done saving your your private key and your public key let's go back to the repository and the directory we're working with so that we can write a script for that and so we say cd from here we just go directly into als system engineering als system engineering um let's go to 0x0b directory and we are back to our directory with ls you discover that we have just two files so now let's create the next file for the answer so the file name is one create ssh key pairs so this is how you generate your ssh key pairs um the command to do that i've already shown you so let's um get our sandbox and write a script for that so we said let's begin with um the interpreter to use should be in the user directory in the beam directory too 
under the environment use bash as your interpreter and we said the second line of our script must be a comment so i can say um generating this is just a comment this is just a comment it's not supposed to be something difficult so just whatever comes to you you can write that generating ssh keep this so this is just what we did so i said so the command to do generate your ssh key is um ssh key gen and the type of file was um rsa file and the number of bytes was um 4096 the name uh, our past phrase was um betty and the location for our file was called school so i believe you understand why it's like this now so we just save our script and exit and make it executable so that the computer can read that so we said let's change the mode to allow all users to execute this script called one create ssh keeper and when you ls you discover that you have an executable script okay now let's try to git add what we've done specify the file git commit uh, my commit message should be um, generating ssh keepers just just as simple as that and i can push okay let's check and see if what we've done is correct it says congratulations all test pack successfully you are ready for your next mission so what's our next mission our next mission says our client configuration file it says your machine has an ssh configuration file for the local ssh okay our configuration file so ssh has a configuration file um that file is located in the etc directory so let's get to see what it's all about so let me just keep things simple clear my screen and from here i'll just go into the etc directory when you ls you discover that you have by my right you discover that you have ssh so all your configuration settings for ssh is here so i'll just from here i can so as we've seen the um, the directory to go to, let me just clear my screen again. I'll cd into ssh and when I ls you discover that we have the configuration file for our ssh here. So let's veer into it and see what's happening in there. So you discover that you have different kind of conf configuration files. So we have configuration file for ecd sa key we have configuration file for ED2551. So our focus is just on RSA key. So let's check out the configuration file for it. We said, um, I think sudo, so that we can be able to edit it. sudo vi just ssh underscore config. So that's the file to go in. So you discover that we have so many comments but the most important thing in this file just begins here so it just tells um to include the etc directory ssh directory the configuration file the default configuration file for every kind of configuration whether it's rsa dsa or ec dsa so whatever they are our our focus is going to be on so the require the requirement for the tag says our client configuration must be configured to use the private key so we are going to configure our file so that it can use this private key that was stored in the dot ssh directory and the name of the file school we are supposed to um configure our file so that it will refuse authentication using the password so let's see how we can implement that so we'll just come back into our file and you discover that let me set numbers 
So to set numbers, you just do shift column set number so that I can be direct with my numbers. So you discover that we are supposed all these are just comments, but the most important thing here is for us to it's online. The most important thing here it's online. So line 25, yes, line 25. So it might not be line 25 in your own file, but my own file says line 25. We are supposed to, it says password authentication, yes. We are supposed to make it no, because the requirements say we should make our configuration file to refuse password authentication. So when someone wants to log into your SSH using a uh, password, um, your configuration file is not, it's, it's not supposed to allow that to happen. So how do we make that change? We we'll just go into insert mode, make this com we uncomment it, that is remove the hash and make it um, a command, then go to the end of the line and change yes to no. So by this we have refused any password um, logins. So the next thing is to create our identity file. If you just come to line 36, you discover that our identity file is um, .ssh id rsa key and too many of them. So we are supposed to enable our identity file. So let's go to line 20, go to line 25 or 30, sorry, line 36 and just add another line to it. So I'll just add another line to it. So I can just add another identity file, identity, and capital F file in the roots direct in the roots in a hidden directory called that SSH, and the name of the file is cool. So the computer will use this as your login requirement. So it's going to use the private key stored in your school for you to log in. So you discover that in this configuration file, we've only added um, password authentication to be no. We've refused that and we've also added the identity file for the computer to use. So if you scroll down, you see some lots of information that are not useful to us right now. So what I'll do is just to copy um, that, just copy the configuration file. Let me see. First and foremost, let me just save and exit. I'll minimize my screen so that I can be able to copy what I want to copy. Veer into it again and just get. Yeah, this is what I want to get. So either you get all of it or just some of it. The important thing is just that the password authentication has been denied and we have also specified our identity key to use. So I'll just copy all of this. Escape. Save and exit. I'll just make my screen bigger once more. Go back to my ALS system engineering. In the directory we're working was 0x0b ls. Um, yeah, I just create a new file for it. The name of the file is. We just get the name of the file. Go back to my terminal and just paste the name of the file. Now I just paste the content I copied from the configuration file. So I'll just paste the content I copied from the configuration file. And there you go. You have your configuration file that has refused password authentication. So in this particular line, you see that my password authentication is no, and I have also specified the identity file. So this, this, this is just the two things you need to do. Specify your identity file and turn off password authentication. So I'll just save and exit. Um, ls and just push my file. Um, I can just say configuration 
configuration changes or whatever okay then git push and check my code to see if what i did was correct so the essence of this video is not just to sh um sh give you answers to your project um, i'm just basically trying to explain every step and also explain every process so that you get to truly understand exactly what you're doing um, by the time you watch one or two videos i believe you you can be able to go carry on your project confidently and uh, be confident in yourself so let's check what we've done if it's correct just go back to project and see so it says congratulations all tests passed successfully you are ready for your next mission so if you successfully carry out these steps um, just go into the ect directory check for ssh go into it check for ssh configuration file you see it go there look for look for the uh, line that just says password authentication yes just change it to no and remove the comment at the beginning and also add the um what's it called the file for your private key just put the location there and you're done with that all right let's go to the next um exercise now the next exercise is let me in so for exercise three this is what we are going to do i'm going to write down the careful you be careful with exercise three so this is what we are going to do so i'll just clear my screen yeah be careful with exercise three so exercise three just before we execute exercise three um this is what i would like you to do so first and foremost let's get our private key our public key so wherever your public key is remember our public key was in the root or whichever location your key is just go there um cd into dot ssh let me ls minus a to see all the hidden files so you can see that my public key is in this directory so i say cd dot ssh i'll go there make an ls this is my private key and this is my public key so what i want to do is just to get my public key so that i can be able to use it so i just vi school.pub so this is my private my public key rather i'll just carefully copy it out or get it from wherever it used to be or i saved it just copy it out carefully now let's exit now i have to go to my intranet profile so i have to go to your so go to your intranet profile so just go to your intranet profile just go to this point just click it when you when you click when you click here it takes you to this page then you scroll down uh, under technical information so just go under technical information from there you will see your ssh public key so that's where you're supposed to save your key so i'll just because i've done this before i'll just delete the old one and put in the new one so you can see that my public key is there i'll just scroll down and click on save my information so just scroll down and click on this save my information so when you do that it tells you that your you can see this message that says your profile was successfully updated so be careful when you copy your ssh key because this is where the errors may come from yeah so just successfully copy them from wherever they are public key please yeah put it in your ssh key information under your technical information click on save my information and it tells you that your in your profile was successfully updated now when you successfully um, saved your information and it says successful the next thing you need to do is now you can come to the project you will see this place called um, your servers 
so we just come to this place actions and click on it so we click on it and click on ask for a new server but before you ask for a new server ensure you've carried out these three steps so the steps to carry out is um so before asking for a new server let me just write it down because this is where the challenge comes from so i said before current before asking for a new server before asking for a new server ensure copy private key copy public key sorry yeah from wherever it is copy public key to your intranet profile save and exit save it um then ask in your server so the first thing you need to do is first and foremost you have to generate the keys i've shown you the command to do that so the first thing generate the keys generate ssh rsa keys second thing you need to copy the keys your profile intranet your intranet profile sorry the next thing you can now ask for a server so ensure you always carry out these three steps before you ask for a server so why is that so because remember we said that the public key will be saved in your server if you ask for a server when you've not created the public key what key is going to be saved in the server so ensure that you create a public your ssh keys then you can now copy your public key to your intranet profile yeah you're just like submitting it to them so that they can be able to add it to your new server so before you do ask for a server let's come back to this um yeah it also tells you that are you sure you like to ask for a new server this one will be destroyed did you update your public ssh key or s user profile yet if you've successfully taken these actions you can say okay and it loads so i'm trying to create a new server yeah asking for a new server is like destroying your sandbox so all the projects i've done inside my server will be um, destroyed so don't be in a rush to ask for a new server so it says here that okay my new server is ready so new server has been created so the next important thing i need you to know is that you need to ensure that your server is saying running so if you can see right here my server is saying pending so i have to like reload my page so ensure that your server is saying running ensure your server is saying running so by that i'll just refresh my page and ensure that my server is saying running so i'll just refresh my page again come down and it says running so you can refresh your page as many times as possible just ensure that your server is running so just ensure that the state of your server is running so i have my server name is um 12 0054 web 1 and my username is ubuntu now this is my ip address so your ip address is supposed to be different this is the the address the computer has given to me to be able to um, carry out activities in the internet so this is just um 52.91.146.23 so yours is going to be different the most important thing is to ensure that your server is running so when your server is running so because so many people will be getting permission denied and all of that i want to solve that with um, this method so one way you can now let me go back to my alx system engineering repository yeah let's go back to the directory 080b and ls acclaimer screen just to make things simple so one thing I want you to do is just to create a file and call it web01. Yeah, because anytime you want to log into your server, you don't need to type in so many commands. So we just create a file and keep all the commands in it. 
so that when we try to log in, it will successfully log in for us. So I'm just going to create a file. I say vi and say let's call this web01. So vi into a file and call it web01. And in it, I'm just going to write a script. Just write a script and say, okay, the user directory, the beam directory, use the environment and use bash as my interpreter. I'll just write a comment and say, okay, um, login or rather server one, server zero one, login. So just put a comment there. And now these are the commands you need to write in it. Yeah, I'm trying to do this. It's, I'm trying to do this so that most people will not get permission denied. So what you do is just, um, let's use another means of um, authenticating you. So we said you can use eval and say dollar. Yeah, let's write a variable and put it in quotation and say SSH agent. So we'll also use this to log in. We'll log in as the SSH agent. And um, the next thing we need to do is to specify the file. We can say SSH add. Yeah, let me just write this, all of this in a different line so that it doesn't confuse you because this is quite important. So you just say add. Remember our file was in the root directory. So if your file is not in the root directory, this is going to be different for you. So SSH, um, I will say use the private the public key there sorry the private key so we say ssh school now remember we saved our private key we want to log in remember from the beginning we said that the public key will be saved in your web server why the private key will be used to um authenticate you so the private key is in your system or your sandbox the public key, you have already saved it to ALX and they are going to put it in your server. So when you try to log in, it's going to compare this private key and the public key that you have, whether they match. If they don't match, you will get permission denied. So I'm trying to escape that permission denied for you because that's like the biggest challenge of this tax. So for you to escape that, just use this command eval SSH agent. Yeah, like another means of logging in and add your private key. Now I've tried to add my private key. Remember it was in the root in .ssh and school. So if your private key is not, is if the name is not school or maybe id underscore rsa, you can just specify the name. But since for this project, our private key is stored in the file called school. So now I will just write SSH the command to login. Our username is Ubuntu. All right, Ubuntu at. Now I'll get my IP address. Let me get my IP address. So this is my IP address. I'll just get my IP address. Go back to the script and paste it there. So your IP address is supposed to be different because you are using a very different. Um, system in a different location so ensure you put your own IP address now let's save this file one more time let's vi into it in case you want to see this vi web and this is what we wrote in the file our IP address and ensure that the path to your private key is there yeah this this is just the only thing that will change if yours in it is in a different location so we just save that and um, we'll ls and discover that we have web01. Now let's change the mode to allow it to be executable. Users execute this script called web and ls you discover it's not executable. So for me to log into my server, I don't need to write any command again because I've already written them in this file called web01. So I will just run the command 
web01 and it will ask me for my passphrase remember my passphrase is um, betty small letter b and it asks you are you sure you want to continue connecting i'll say yes and it's going to log in into my web server so you can see right here that i am successfully logged in into my web server so my web server is ubuntu that's my web name yours is going to be different but something similar so you see right here that i have my web server no longer a sandbox this is now a web server okay so i'll just clear my screen So you have to be careful there. So when you LS you discover that um, there is nothing in your web server because it's a new one. Now let's go back to the project. For tax three, what you need to do is just to copy this key that has been provided for you. So this key belongs to ALX. So this is ALS um, public key. So just copy all of it go into your web server not your sandbox now you can see that this is no longer a sandbox but a web server so you can see here that i have my web server running so when i ls there's nothing there but let's check if there's any hidden content okay i will now see that i have another hidden ssh in my web server so i'll cd into it ssh and when I ls, I'll discover that I have a file called authorized keys. Now, this is where I'm going to save my public key. Yeah, authorized keys just gives um, any uh, one with the public key allows you to um, be able to access your servers. So because we are all doing projects and we need to be marked or scored, we need to add ALX um, public key into our server so that whenever we do a project, our scores will be marked from there or our projects will be marked from there so I'll just v yeah I can do sudo vi authorize keys and so you can see we have a couple of um, public keys here already so the first key just belongs to the host like the people providing the server for you this other key belongs to you. Now let's add ALX into it. So I'll just set numbers. So I'll just go to line two. Two, let's go to the end of the line and create another line. And I'll paste the pop, the key I got from the tax. So if you look at my own um, authorized keys, you discover that I said the first key is just the provider of the server. For the next key is just yours, your own public key. Now this is ALX public key. So these pe this persons have um, access to your servers because they are the owners of the server. You have access to the server because you created a new one. Now ALX has access to the server because they are going to come here and mark your project. So when you are done with that, just save and exist. So if I'm too fast with my explanations, you can always pause the video and check out what I've done. So you just sudo vi authorize keys, paste in the key you got from tax3. So just paste in the key you got from tax3 and you can go ahead and check your code so it says um so that's that's all for tax tree so if you've successfully done that it says congratulations or test pass successfully you're ready for the next mission all right yeah the next mission is um so the next task is for us to practice what we've done using so remember when we made changes to our configuration file. So instead of manually doing it uh, by going into the configuration file, looking for the lines that says password authentication, yes or no, um, public key and all that, 
instead of manually doing it. So assuming we have um, um, configurations that are distributed for different um, programs, maybe this this was just for SSH. What if we have for Python? What if we have for um, another system? Do we manually go into each and every system trying to uh, modify the configuration? No, that's where Puppet comes in. It helps us to um, automate our tasks. It helps us to be consistent. So if you have re repeatable actions, so if you have repeatable actions and you want to ensure that it is consistent among different configurations, so instead of manually configuring each file one by one, you can just use Puppet. So Puppet just allows you to define the desired configurations. And once those configurations have been um, implemented, then they can be applied. It will consistently, uh, consistently across multiple systems. So instead of uh, manually going into every system and checking for the SSH directory, checking for the configuration file, you can just write a Puppet script or a puppet manifest. So instead of saying a puppet script, you call it a puppet manifest. So you just write a puppet manifest that can be able to do that for you. So when you apply that, it will be uh, implemented across the numerous systems you have. So it's one way of being, um, of working smartly and also working consistently. So let's try and see if we can write um, a puppet manifest for that. Yeah, I'll try and release a video on Puppet so you get to understand some basic commands in Puppet. But for now, let's just, um, with the knowledge we've had or you've gotten, let's try and write the Puppet manifest to implement what we did in Tax 2. So let's see, in Tax 2, remember we just changed the configuration key to this and we also refused, we also refused um, authentic authentications through password so let's see if we can write a puppet manifest for that okay so let's just get the name of the file we'll get back to our terminal remember this is now my web server so i'll just exit it because this is not where i'm going to write the puppet manifest script so i'll exit and come back to my ALS system engineering DevOps, just create the file VI puppet. So the first line of my script is supposed to be hash. Um, just specify, let's specify um, the interpreter we want to use, and we say we want to use, go into the user directory, USR, under the beam. In that environment, we can use bash to interpret the script. And we say the second line of your script is supposed to be a comment. And we can just say using puppet to make changes to our configuration file. To make changes, yeah, wrong with that. Okay, so that's just a comment. Your comment can be different, should be different, not can be different. So let's, so in Puppet, you say phi, just to specify the phi. And you can say, we'll use the curly braces and say our phi is located in etc. Remember it was etc, um, it was ssh and it was ssh underscore config yeah that was the file we made changes to so this is the file we want to make changes to and um, we can put a column on that and the next thing we are going to say is um, we're going to say ensure so this word ensure just to make sure that the file is present so puppet should make sure that this file is present so we say ensure that the file is present. And what next? The content of the file should be, so maybe you want to write um, 
a comment you can just say content and put an arrow to that our content should be now we can begin to write our content we we'll go to the next line and just say um just put a comment and say ssh client configuration ssh client configuration yeah spelling wrong configuration okay it should ensure that there is a host i'll vis visually show you that so that's ensure that there is a host under that host um let's make sure that our identifier identify identify should be in the root dot ssh and the name of the file should be school so that's the file the computer is going to use to log in when you try to do ssh so our password should be let's deny password authentication so we said authentications should be no instead of yes so this is our puppet script and let's end our block of codes so this is our puppet script we started it by using an interpreter bash and this is just a comment saying making changes to our configuration file and we said the keyword to use is file and you specify the path to your file so the file we want to use to make changes to is the configuration file and it's located in the etc directory under ssh directory you will see a configuration file called ssh under config and ensure that it's present so the content of it should be this is just a comment and then remember there was a host for everything regarding ssh we said uh, you should this um, specify the file to use to log into your servers and we also say that password authentication should be no so you will not be allowed to log in using password you can only log in using your private key that's just simply what this means so we just save and exit and ls um this is yeah you can change the mode for it you say change the mode to allow users to be able to execute this script 100 okay ls i can git add um, 100 git commit and saying using puppet or whatever you want to say okay yeah something wrong there quotation marks all right i can git push and see if all the things we've done is correct or not okay so i have come to the end of the video so if you've carefully followed carried out these instructions everything should work fine for you okay Okay, something not right. Okay, something is wrong with our script. Um, let's go back to the script and see what's wrong. Okay, if we are into it. Uh, okay, send it. I started the comment and I didn't close it. Set number. Um, I started the comment here on line seven, but I didn't use um to close the comment so I'm just going to close the comment and um, yeah just close my comment so that, that was what was wrong I started a comment on line 7 but I didn't close my quotation marks so that was wrong I'll just uh, make changes just go back get, get added git added git commit yeah git push now let's check if that was correct so let's see if that is correct 
okay works fine now you have some time just carefully go to the video carry out your exercises carefully so that you can do this in one piece then by the time you've successfully carried out this project i believe it has given you like a wider understanding of what the, what the project is all about now if you're not yet subscribed to the channel yeah that's on you because you're going to be missing a lot i'm going to drop another video on the next project so ensure you subscribe and stay up to date with uh, my videos